Our text is recorded in chapter 8 of the book of Judges. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulchre of his father in Ophrah of the Abai Israel. Tonight we are come to be alone with God in our thoughts in the final minutes of a New Year's Eve. And in these fading minutes of another day, in the closing hours of another year, they are tokens to us that all our days will end and our earthly life itself will come to a close. Now that may not be a pleasant thought, but it is a factual truth. Soon or late, you and I too will stand in the doorway of the last exit, lay down our luggage and our walking sticks, and bid farewell to our traveling companions on the roadway of life. But we shall do so in good company, with the whole rest of the human race without exception. And so did the people of God in days gone by. In these recent weeks, we have studied the life story of the man Gideon, who came from humble origins, the smallest family clan of Manasseh, and went on to record one of the most extraordinary military victories the world has ever seen. And tonight we come to this brief notice in the record, and Gideon died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of his father in Ophrah of the Abai Israel. There is something wonderfully reassuring about this brief obituary notice, something that transforms these ordinary lives of ours into a thing of promise and importance and infinitely precious. The highlights of Gideon's life will stand out in your memory. How the call of God came to the man when he was threshing grain with a stick, hiding in a wine press for fear of the Midianites. And how he began at home and among his own clan members, tearing down the images of Baal and rearing an altar to the living Lord. He sounded the trumpet throughout Manasseh, and his men gathered to them. And on that never-to-be-forgotten night, he equipped them not with sword and spear, but with a trumpet in one hand and a flaming torch in the other, and stampeded the armies of Midian in utter chaos and panic. He pursued them out into the eastern desert, when he returned, his grateful people wanted to make him a king in Israel. But he declined the offer and said, Not I, but the Lord shall rule over you. There are highlights looking back in your lives too. Probably nothing on so grand a scale as Gideon. But shining moments which stick in your memory. Some of you can remember your own humble origins and looking back by the help of God, it is astonishing how far you've come through the years. Others again of you may recall times when the odds were heavily stacked against you and the obstacles were insurmountable by human standards. And yet, by the sheer grace of God and the strength that comes from God, you manage to carry through. But life is not all victory and triumph, and neither was Gideon. There were moments when the man wavered and doubted and plainly disbelieved. 
The promises of God seem too good to him. So grand and generous that these suspicious hearts of ours are slow to take them in. We've seen how marvelously patient God is with his people. How he lowers himself to their level. Never leads them faster or farther than they are able to follow. He accepted the sacrifice from Gideon's hand. He gave him a pledge in the fleece on the threshing floor. Let him overhear the dream of defeat that was already running through the Midianite army. And faint and still pursuing, the Lord sustained him in a small band of 300 out into the desert where their own countrymen had quite given up on them. But just so did Jesus patiently lead his followers to greater faith. He gave them little help along the way. To his frightened followers, he said, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? And then, Build the storm to show you that you have nothing to fear as long as Christ rides with you in the little boat of your life. To a father whose little daughter lay dying, Christ said, only believe, and then restored the little girl to the father again to show him that such faith is never put to shame. Christ silenced the critics of a shamed and weeping woman and sent her away with the high word of hope. Thy faith hath saved the departing peace. We wouldn't even notice the incidents if they were missing. It was Christ who saw that the fishermen's nets were empty. They who followed him out into the wilderness were hungry. He, his heart went out to the woman of Nain simply because she was a widow. And the last little bit of sunshine in her life had gone out. He took upon himself the embarrassment of the bridal couple in Cana who ran out of refreshments at the wedding reception. He saw that his friend Thomas was badly mixed up and having a hard time of his soul. He let him look a little at the print of the nails in his hand. And so, by little loving kindnesses along the way, Christ leads us to a larger, fuller, more abundant, and eternal life that he offers. But then, the faults and the sins are part of the record, too. The Bible never does a cover-up, nor try to whitewash the faults of the people of God, Gideon, or ours. Gideon appeased the wrath of the proud men of Ephraim, but he didn't speak the blunt truth that one expects from a warrior of God. And then Gideon made that golden image, set it up there among his own family, probably had the very best of intentions with it, to show the cause of God to his family members, Prove to them how real and how appealing the Lord is. And especially in those days when the sanctuary of God at Shiloh was deserted. And the priesthood was completely incompetent. But it was not the altar of God. It was not the blood of the Lamb. It was not of faith. And it was sin. So 
doomed to become a snare to Gideon's own family. And the plain fact of Gideon's polygamy is also recorded. The multiplying to himself of many wives and other women who were not his wives and numerous children from them all. And it simply won't wash to say that that's the prerogative and privilege of princes and kings. Or to say it was accepted practice in the primitive days in which Gideon lived. That was not the design of God in marriage when he set up male and female. It was immorality and soon to produce pain and a sorry consequences as we shall shortly read about. And yet, we are told that for the next 40 years of Gideon's life, his people and his homeland enjoyed a period of peace and prosperity. Gideon himself lived a long, full, satisfying life and died in a good old age. And later on, the name of Gideon is emblazoned on the roll call of the heroes of faith in the New Testament. And precisely so is God's way with us in Christ. He promises to forgive his faithful people. We'll make no mention of the evil that we have done. And remember of us only the good that we have accomplished. And on that last day, Christ will say to those on the right hand, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Naked and you clothed me, a stranger, and you took me in. And inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, you have done it unto me. So completely will he blot out our sin and mention only that which we've done for you in faith. Now, to show you the worth of a single human life. How important is the part that God has given you to play? And how precious the chance you have to count for God. The text tells us what happened when Gideon died. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and worshipped Baal Beery. Imagine, his body is scarcely cold and matters take a drastic turn. No longer do the people worship the God who made them, but gods of their own making. Whoredom, the Bible calls it. They went a whoring after Baal, adultery, unfaithfulness to the one that you belong to, the one who is faithful to you, loving and loyal and open-hearted to you. And the results are predictable. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God who delivered them out of the hand of their enemies on every side. And once you go wrong with God, you're going to go wrong with the people of God also. And neither showed they any kindness to the house of Gideon, in spite of all of the goodness which he had shown unto Israel. They forgot how quickly, how short is man's memory. No longer remembered that fellow had risked and ventured his life for them and were cold and cruel to his survivors. The point is, my friends, 
that you and I have a short term to come for God. To play the game. Fight the good fight of faith. You see, Gideon's father was an idolater. And when Gideon was dead, the people worshipped other gods. But the short time that he was there, he stemmed the tide. And what our fathers did before us, for good or evil, and what the next generation will do when we are gone, that's their business. And they will account for that. But you and I have just a short time. It astonishes me how short the time is. It makes our hearts ache and tears sting our eyes. And with an inexpressible sorrow to think of the friends and family members that are no longer with us this Christmas Eve. Some of them separated from us by distance and others by the veil of death. And who can say if Christmas Day will come to you and me again? Touch hands, my friend, while you've got the chance. Forgive the false and the false. And be there for one another in the little while that you and I have to come for God. Now, our accomplishments and opportunities are not on so broad a scale as we're getting at. And what we've done will not be long remembered. And if your name and mine is going up on any honor roll of heroes, I've never heard about it. Jesus said, that's not the important thing. When the 70 came back to him to tell the miracles they had witnessed and the wonders they had accomplished in his name, Jesus did not dampen their joy at all. He accepted that as fact. Christ believed that great things can be done when two work together, the weak and the strong, man and God, his hands and ours at the same task. Of course, said Jesus, he said, rejoice rather, he said, Rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.